All right, hey everybody. Um, so I've got an exciting one today. I think that you're really gonna like this one. Um, so I got, I actually get this question a lot. Um, but uh, this guy uh, Karan, I think he wrote this blog post called "How to Use Babel Macros with React Native." And in the blog post, he actually uses Babel plugin CodeGen, and there's no use of uh, Babel macros in here at all. And so I explained, you know, you're not actually using Babel plugin macros, you're using uh, Babel plugin CodeGen. And so he said, well, what's the difference? Because uh, there's confusion, it's not, um, it's not obvious. And then a couple of days later, this guy, um, Sibelius, um, asked a question about the difference between uh, preval and code gen, I think. Um, so anyway, I thought I'd just show you the difference between all three of these plugins uh, because they're all, um, yeah, they're all kind of related. So the way I'm going to show you though is in this uh, fancy little demo I've got here. So in my package JSON, I've got a couple uh, dev dependencies, um, Babel of course, and then uh, each one of the plugins, and then a couple extra things that we'll see here in a little bit. Um, and then I've got a build which will run all three of these. Um, and these will just um, run each of our examples and output to this dist directory. So let's start out with preval because that was the one that I wrote first. And actually, um, you can watch me write it. I live streamed writing it, um, but I didn't have any audio because I was sitting next to my wife in bed writing it. Um, and she was reading a book and I didn't want to be talking while I was. And so I, there's no audio, but you can actually watch me write it. Um, the link in the preval readme. Um, it's uh, these plugins, or yeah, these Babel plugins aren't actually terribly large. Like I think all three of them are. Uh, no, that's not true. They're they're in a couple files, but yeah, they're they're pretty small uh, plugins. But yeah, let's just take a look at um, our input, and then we can take a look at the output. So. Um, preval, probably the easiest, most straightforward example right, is right here. Um, so when you have the preval plugin um, running in your project, then you can use this global preval variable and you can use it like a tag template literal and inside of that tag template literal you have a string of code. And so here you can do anything that you would do in Node, um, but then it's pre-evaluated at build time. So this will run when your Babel plugin runs um, and so it does have to be synchronous, everything has to be synchronous. And then whatever you module export, um, be that an object or a string or anything, will be replace will replace the whole contents of preval. And so module exports um, will be what is um, evaluated here. So if we look at the um, result here, we have our const greeting equals hello world, and that's because um, we require fs and then we read file sync greeting dot text, and that greeting text is hello world. So that's the basic idea. Lots of people look at this and they get tied up and they're like, oh wait, but this means that I don't have syntax highlighting or editor uh, like linting or like it's just terrible. Lots of the same things that they said about um, styled components when we got started uh, doing that, but um, that's not really actually a big issue um, because um, if you really cared about that, you just say module.exports equals require file. You probably don't need to have um, linting for that. But even if like despite that there are other ways to use preval um, which we'll look at here in a second. One other neat thing is that um, it, it actually works with interpolation and so here we have this name splitter thing which is actually just splitting on a space. Um, but the name splitter is uh, takes an argument and we're getting the argument from some other code here. So it's pretty limited on what it can interpolate. Like if you were to import this from another module or something and, and then try to use it, that wouldn't work. Um, but it, it uh, yeah, the, that's a thing that, that's there um, and it, it does does work. So it's kind of kind of neat. You can take a look at that. First last, Bob Hope. So, uh, and what's cool about this is that it, it because it's pre-evaluated, you're actually uh, getting um, like you're you're potentially saving the user a lot of um, um, code that they would normally need to evaluate. So there are trade-offs. Like it's it maybe is more code. What you're pre-evaluating pre results in more code, and so that's more to parse and download and stuff. Um, but it's less to execute, I guess. I I don't know. It's 
it, there, there are use cases for it. I'll show you some here in a little bit. So then you also have uh, the comment form um, on, on an import. So you do an import and then you say preval and preval will look at this and um, run that file in node as it's being transpiled and whatever is exported um, will get assigned to a variable called file list here. So if we look at that, um, that import statement gets ex uh, changed to a const and then um, it gets assigned to whatever was exported. So if we look at get list of files here, um, that's using glob and then we're doing glob sync because it has to be synchronous um, because Babel runs synchronously so we can't make it asynchronous capable. Um, that's not entirely true, we can and if you really want to then um, I can show you what would need to happen for that to work. But it would be like crazy slow, so there's that. Um, but in any case, we're, we're getting all the JavaScript files here and uh, making a list of them. And so here you could see this being useful for like, um, uh, like a, a blog or something. You have a list of markdown files. You want to just get the whole list of them. Um, yeah, I could see that be kind of handy. There's actually uh, something else that I'll show you later that would probably do this job a little bit better. But, um, and then we also can provide arguments to preval in this comment. So you have this uh, preval three, get list of files with limit. And then um, here, what you're exporting now is a function um, that returns the value that you wanna have inserted. And so that's, uh, that's that. What's really cool about this is this actually can be dyna dynamic. So we could actually require path and then um, join um, like process.cwd and um, file name and um, then we'll just change this to return the limit and then if we run that again on our preval um, then we look at index here and we're going to get that full path um, so that's kind of neat you can uh, do some pretty cool things with this um, building ID. Uh, and then we also have preval.require. So if you don't want to do the import for some reason, then you can do preval.require and it works exactly the same way. Um, and then arguments are passed as the second argument to require. Um, and then there was one other thing. Yes, comment. So you can also have preval evaluate the entire module and then um, have it Ex module export whatever the end value is instead so um, here we're we've got this compose function and and we're composing a bunch of things together and we're operating on three so we square it and then the identity just return the same thing and then we double it and we wind out up with module exports 36 and this comment that says this file was prevailed uh, so that's pretty handy um, so there are some really cool use cases here for preval um, let's see, whoops, that should probably be fixed. Um, but yeah, so Mastodon saved 40 kilobytes gzipped using uh, Babel plugin preval. Uh, I think it was for some emoji thing or something. Uh, so yeah, lots of really cool things that you can do um, with preval. So yeah, I, I especially like this for UI stuff. Um, like I, I want to be able to get all the files or, you know, do some sort of operation at build time. Um, and yeah, so preval is really cool for that. Uh, code gen is actually really similar. So we'll spend a little bit less time on that. Um, there's, there's a really important difference, but the, um, lots of the API is very similar. So you, uh, now you have the code gen variable, uh, because we have code gen, um, operating on this file. And um, we're doing something really similar here. We're reading a file um, and all, all it depends on is this module exports, except now instead of exporting a value, what you're exporting is a string of code. And that string of code is what's going to replace this. So code gen is a lot more powerful because it's, it's not just a single value that you can assign something to, but it's, it's a whole string of code. So you can do um, exports and you can do like a, a bunch of other extra syntactical things uh, using code gen. So here if we look at the sum code here it's going to be this thing and then if we look in our dist for code gen um, then we get some code. Looks like it's not copying over the comments which is um, I'm not sure why it's not doing that but 
I guess it, it doesn't want to. So, um, yeah, so that's that's the idea here. So you get the same same sort of API. Um, so if we look at the assign one, that's module exports and then a string of code. And that string of code is what's getting inserted here, var assign one equals one. And then we're doing the same thing with assign identity. We get an input and we, um, it has to be a string of code. And so that's why we're chasing on stringifying the input. Um, and so if we look at how we're using that, uh, we're actually doing the full uh, path thing and we can look at here and that's what we end up with. Um, and then we have uh, the interpolation works here as well and eat. Um, I didn't add it, but there's also codegen.require, which works the same as preval.require. So that's, uh, that's how code, um, codegen and preval differ. So preval is for evaluating values and then replacing um, the usage of preval, oh, whoops, uh, the usage of preval with the value. So that could be an object, it could be a, a function, it could be um, just about anything. Uh, functions, the way that it works are, is kind of wonky um, and it's not entirely safe. So I wouldn't generally recommend trying to preval functions, but it, it does work. Like you, you can module export a function. It just, uh, you could run into issues where the function is depending on something in its closure and you're not exporting that as part of the preval thing. So you can run into some problems there. Uh, but mostly I, I find this useful for data anyway. Um, so anyway, so that's preval, it's for values and code gen is for generating code, okay? So you export uh, strings of code. That's a little bit harder, but it's much more powerful. Okay, so where Babel plugin macros comes into play here is um, it's actually like very different from these uh, two plugins. So um, I'm not even gonna talk about it in comparison. Um, so uh, at least not at first. Um, Babel plugin macros allows you to uh, write plugins that are part of your source code in a really easy way um, with a couple constraints that are really intentional. So here we're importing gemify from gemify.macro. It's a local file and um, this is what it looks like. You have require Babel plugin macros and this can live in the, the client. This code will not run in the client. This code will run at build time. And so it runs in Node, even if you're shipping your content to the client. That's the same thing for all three of these, actually. All of this stuff is running in Node at build time. Um, so yeah, Babel plugin macros, create macro, and then you module exports, create macro, and then your function. And then that function um, will accept an object that has uh, some things on it, references, state, Babel, uh, um, several other things. Um, and then here we have Gemify, we're importing Gemify from Gemify macro. So that's the default import. And so on our references object that we get, we're gonna get um, an array of default references. So this is a reference. Um, this is also another reference. So now that array has two items in it and it's a reference of identifiers. Um, okay, so we're getting into like um, AST territory here. But so we say references. Um, yeah, okay, so somebody in the chat just asked me, is that uh, thing you talked about prepack? Um, I think I missed, or I, I must have missed what you're talking about that I was talking about, but um, no, I haven't mentioned prepack in here. Um, but this is different from prepack. Prepack is like pretty. Similar problem space, but yeah, very different tool. Um, you can go look at that later. Uh, okay, so we have um, now do -do -do, two references in uh, as a default reference. You could also have, we had something else. Then uh, you now have references dot something else. And that's an array of every time something else is used inside our code. Ah, so now there's a an array of one that has one uh, reference to this identifier, um, and then yeah, just like all over the place. And what's cool about this is that um, we could even alias this to uh, stuff, and it will always, as far as we're concerned, it's called something else because that's what we're exporting, uh, presumably. And so 
it doesn't matter what they call it and uh, Babel actually tracks that and uh, Babel plugin macros will will just normalize that for you so anyway um, from there whoops you um, from there we can do stuff with those paths to those references so here we're going to get the parent path and get the arguments so that's the first argument path that is uh, this thing okay and then uh, we're going to get the value so we have the string value we're going to um, split that and join it with Gemma I tried an emoji but Babel didn't um, uh, trans uh, it transpiled it to its unicode um, and so it didn't look like a puppy and that was annoying so I, I changed it to Gemma my dog uh, so then we get the the string value that's been gemified and then we're going to get the gemify function call um, from the argument um, function so these are the arguments now we're getting the whole thing and we're going to uh, get the gemified string literal so we're going to take Babel create a string literal node out of this gemified string and then we're going to replace the function call with the gemified string literal so we're replacing this whole thing with our gemified version of that string and so when we look at this uh, we're going to see console log hello gemma world so what's cool about Babel plugin macros is it allows you to do any kind of transformation that you want to at build time and you can commit that like that transformation as part of your source code and so it's like way more powerful than preval way more powerful than code gen um and uh yeah just really really awesome um uh, stuff that you can do it, it takes a little bit of understanding of asts to uh for whoops to get it um but once you uh, like work with that a little bit, then you can figure it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, so the reason that people kind of get things confused, I think, is because there is a macro for preval. So lots of Babel plugins um, can actually be written as macros. And so the way that preval and CodeGen have been written um, is uh, they've kind of been um, extracted to make it really easy to share between a Babel plugin and a macro. Um, and yeah, it's actually a lot easier to write a macro than a, a full-on Babel plugin. But in any case, um, yeah, so you can do a lot of the same things with preval. Um, you can't do the comments um, like in the import, and you can't do slash slash at preval because you have to have a reference to a default import. Uh, and then CodeGen is exactly the same. And then there are a whole bunch of other um, plugins. So I, I have this blog post. Um, that explains how to write your own macros um, and there are a whole bunch of other macros there's this import all one there's this uh, GraphQL macro to load a GraphQL query um, there's this partial application um, macro that is pretty awesome smart people know about it and I don't understand it but I think it's cool uh, import all uh, macro will allow you to say hey import all of the files and then it'll do a promise dynamic import um, or you can do a sync and it'll uh, transform that into uh, synchronous imports. Um, so if you have a list of files, whatever. And this is all done with the um, macros. And what's cool about Babel plugin macros is that you you only need to configure the macro plugin in Babel. And then from there, it's just like magic. Um, you can use any macro uh, throughout your project. and um, and it's really clear that this isn't like if we look at the code gen example, um, you see this and you're like, okay, what's that code gen global variable like? And, and what's this code gen comment? Like new developers coming in are going to be really confused. But if you have um, import code gen from code gen macro, then they're like, okay, so this code gen thing is coming from that code gen macro. Now I know where to go to learn about what that thing even is. Um, so it's more direct. Also, you don't have to do any special things with your linting setup to make it work um because it's it's like oh it's just something you're importing okay cool so i think that's pretty neat um yeah let's see there's something else that i was going to mention oh yeah the cool thing another cool thing about this is create uh, react app version 2 is going to have babel plugin macros baked in and that's actually kind of where babel plugin macros came from was trying to get something into um create react app that didn't require you to edit the um the built-in config uh, because they don't let you do that. So there you go. Um, I'm late for stand-up, so I'm going to peace out here really quick, but I'll put links to this stuff um, in the video later. 
And uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful to the question askers and to the video watchers. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all later. Bye.